get some exercise. You, you want to be using this to burn some calories and get your life back in order because you've made lots of bad decisions. So that's what this e-bike is for. Hey guys, Johnny Nerd out here. Got another custom e-bike build for you. What we did, we took a normal, awesome, everyday bike and we turned it into an awesomer, more everyday e-bike. This was a bike that was shipped in from to me uh, to have it converted, and then I'm gonna be shipping it out back to them. I think I've, I've done a few bikes like this one, but everyone's a slightly different. You'll see, I'll tell you like what makes this one a little bit different than the other ones I've done. If you're new to this channel, I convert bikes into e-bikes. So most of my channel is about videos about e-bikes, everything related to e-bikes. Let's get right into what we did to it. So, put a mid-drive motor on it. It's a BBS 02, 750 watt motor. Mid-drive, which means the crank comes right here. It's powering the crank. It's adding power to your wheels, to your legs, to your pedals. And that power is getting sent to here. So the mid-drives do power multiplication, unlike a hub motor. Hub motors are just set in that single gear here, which, you know, if you live in a hilly area, not good. Do not get a hub motor if you live in a really hilly area. So we added a mid-drive here. We've got a gear shift sensor here. What that does is it senses when you're shifting gears, cuts power for a minute, lets that gear get into the next, lets the chain get into the next gear, then it sends power. So it's really gonna help protect your chain and your rear gears here from getting stripped out and breaking chains. Totally recommend doing this. It's gonna save you a lot of hassle, a lot of headache. Get a gear shift sensor if you're putting a mid-drive on. We got brakes up here, mechanical disc brakes with uh, a brake cutoff built into the levers. Went with a 500C display. It's a nice, small color display. Shows you your voltage in a digital readout. Also shows you how many watts your motor is pulling. So it's a nice upgraded display. I definitely like going with this. Buttons are integrated into the display, so it's nice and small. Next to it, we got the throttle. So you could hit the throttle and move, use this thing as a moped if you want. Use it for exercise. Don't just hit the throttle and go around unless you're injured. Unless you were just going so hard that you sprained your ankle and you had to fight a bear, and now you just got blood just gushing everywhere, and you gotta get to the nearest hospital, then hit the throttle and go there. E-bikes are enabling people to get out there and ride and burn calories. I get more exercise on my e-bike than I ever did on a conventional bike because I'm out there way longer and I'm going way farther. So you see we got a small battery here. It's a 48 volt, six amp hour battery. Sits nicely underneath the seat here. It looks super discreet. Look at this. You almost can't even tell it's, a, it's an e-bike until you look down and you see the nice bulge there. Yeah, so these are good for about a 15 mile range, I would say. The customer here, he's getting a second battery, so he's gonna double it. If he wants to go for a longer ride, he'll just grab another one and just hot swap these things. You could find these on the used market for, you know, a few hundred dollars. You know, you probably spend another 1,200 bucks, actually about a thousand dollars, less than upgrading it with this setup. This is under a thousand dollars, this setup here. And you get yourself a killer e-bike, especially if you already had this in your garage, then you're spending a thousand dollars on an e-bike that will blow the pants off of any pre-made e-bike for the price, for even three times the price. This is gonna blow the pants off it. Let's go do a Johnny Nerd Out test here where I do performance tests on my bikes from a stop climbing up a hill, from a rolling start climbing up the hill, and then just a flat out top speed test. So you can see this thing did 33 miles an hour. I think it's because it's a 48 volt. Um, if it was a 52, it might have a little bit of pop, might give it like an extra mile an hour range. Hill climbing, just as usual, climbed it no problemos. If you wanted to climb even better, go with a smaller chain ring, or you could put a bigger one up front. It's all about getting that gear ratio as close as you can to like one to one. Like if you had a 36 tooth here and a 36 in the back, thing's gonna climb like a beast. Or if you had a 44 up front, you put a 44 in the back, again, hill climbing beast. If you get it to less than one to one, you, you end up with a wheelie machine. Like I did a 28 tooth up front one time and I had a 50 tooth in the rear. That's almost a two to one ratio. First two to three gears was just nonstop wheeling. Like you had to try to not wheelie. And I know people are like, oh, wheelies aren't cool. That's not the point. You don't want to be wheeling unless you're trying to impress some eight year olds. But this thing will climb anything. And I was on a fat tire bike. So that means that that thing could climb 
in the snow up probably 50 degree inclines. Anyways, hopefully you guys found this helpful and yeah, see y'all later, be safe.